Welcome back to another episode of Mozzie Sales kind of foil design with um, Rob and Tom. Today we're talking about the the foil position, the wing position relative to the uh, foil arm, pushing that foil forward or backwards, and it can have some really interesting impacts on the hydrodynamics around that intersection, but also the center of gravity versus the lifting uh, point of the boat which has got some quite in interesting repercussions as well so um, yeah let's have a chat to the lads why the teams got their foils in different places where the lifting surfaces are relative to the foil arm and potentially where they are relative to the hull center of gravity I mean, we don't don't really know that do we it's hard hard to tell where they're putting the weight in the hull but um, certainly in terms of foil arms we can see as you look down the foil arm some actual foil legs step forward or step back and then when you get to the very very bottom the intersection with the foil some foils are set forward of that intersection and some are set backwards from it what's the reasoning what's the reasoning for this so let's talk about forwards first. And Lunar Oster, I think, Lunar Oster are the only team with their foil leading edge in front of their vertical leading edge. Yeah. So one of the main benefits of this, uh, we've talked a lot about ventilation at the tips, but ventilation on the vertical is also going to be a factor. So if you set the foil in front of the vertical, it means any air traveling down the vertical is going to not affect that leading edge of the foil as much and you won't get ventilation traveling it down the vertical and then out from the route. So there's, there's a yeah, benefit from that point of view. It separates the peak pressures of your uh, vertical and your lifting surface. Th that's a much better way of phrasing what I was trying to talk about when I was talking about the bulbs and the, the two fat bits coming together at the same time. <laughs> separate the so peak pressures. The... Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it, you're, you're right, Tom. And, we, and we've seen that on moth foils in the past. And you've probably seen this on International 14 rudders. You have the option yeah. of offsetting the lifting foil in, to the front of the vertical, or you have yeah, it in yes. line and you end up with different problems either way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We, we mount the, the wing uh, so that the peak pressure of the, the lifting surface is in front of the, uh, the leading edge of the, um, the vertical. There are some subtleties we're going to talk about later or hugely speculate because the smaller smaller differences get, the smaller the features get, the harder it is to tell from the photos that, that we have. And obviously we've not got a full America's Cup spy team, sadly. Uh, yeah, yet. <laughs> but <laughs> yet. Yeah. J just on the other, um, I mean, do you want to talk centre of gravity a bit more, Tom? Because I, I mean, I do think that's... Yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah, let's cover that off. Yeah. So, well, let, let's look at the basics first. So with... You've, you've effectively got three options when you're setting up your hydrofoil relative to center of gravity. And actually on these boats, you only have one of those three available to you because of the rule. Rules aside, you can either put your center of gravity in front of the main foil. If you did that, the boat always wants to tip forwards. So you need to make your rudder a downward lifting surface to always be pulling the back of the boat down. So aeroplanes often fly like that they can shift the fuel in front of the wing and that makes them very very stable longitudinally yeah. on a75 you're not allowed to do that the center of gravity is defined as being behind the region where you can have your lifting surface so the rudder in that case has to be a lifting surface but you can also achieve pretty good balance and the more you separate the center of gravity from the center of pressure on the foils the more stable that system is going to become so on the first american magic boat we saw the crew right at the back of the boat and i don't think the, the range of center of gravity within of the hull is pretty limited so the best way to get center of gravity aft is push the crew back and yeah no one else has done that since and american magic moved away from that on the second boat so that indicates to me that people are trying to get their center of gravity close to the center pressure on those main foils. And yeah. on, on Luna Rossa, their, their, um, their foil arm is as far back in the rule as it can be. And they're 
lifting surface sits a tiny bit in front of that. Team New Zealand have was, the, their flat, their foil way off the back of their foil arm. So that foil flat must be sitting right at the back of the, uh, of the foil region. Ooh. So their boat's going to be, their center of gravity and their flap are going to be really close longitudinally. So Team New Zealand will be less stable longitudinally than anyone else I'm going to suggest. Yeah. This is one of the good questions asked in the press conference and it was asked to all teams but only Ben Ainsley answered and he'll be pissed off that the other teams didn't have to answer the same question as well <laughs> but he was asked whether whether the rudder is a lifting surface or not and how much it contributes to lift and Ben's answer was well yes it is a lifting surface initially but then at some point it stops being a lifting surface and then isn't anymore. And he didn't really go into details of when, but obviously it's lifting to get them up, foiling, but then afterwards, you know, they are pretty finely balanced boats. And obviously the power in the rig is gonna be pushing forward as well. So you've got that kind of um, um, force in the mixers, mix as well. So yeah, I'm I think- gonna put it out there. And I, I think that once the boats get to about 30 knots ish uh the rudder foil starts to act in is in it sucks the transom down rather than lifting up so it's acting as a acting as a stabilizer in the system yeah. rather rather than being a major contributor to overall lift so i mean like we're not experts in moths but i'm pretty sure that the there's a trend in moth rudder foils to go to symmetric sections because they're as often pulling down as they are up. And if you're at very small angles of attack, you can probably get lower drag. So it would not surprise me at all to see symmetric sections on the elevators. Yeah. Um, and there is a writing moment element to this as well, isn't there? That obviously the rudder is a long way to windward of your pivot point. So if, if you can if you can get to that tipping point where your your rudder's pulling down earlier, then that's a good thing from a from a writing moment point of view. Okay, so I've uploaded this video, watched it back, and then kind of thought, ah, I should say more on this point because it's one of the fascinating aspects of the whole balance of these boats when they're in motion. And I've just stated there that getting the rudders be acting as downforce earlier is better and that's not actually completely true so you may think yeah more writing movement more downforce on the rudder away from the pivot point that's better but that downforce and rudder isn't free so there's induced drag to create the downforce in the rudder and that's obviously got to be met by lift from the main foil as well, where there'll be further induced drag. I think this is called uh, trim, trim drag for planes. Now, this is important because writing moment from the weight being out to windward is kind of free writing moment, really. You've got to carry that weight anyway, so you might as well maximize that kind of cant arm before you start putting writing moment from the rudder. So getting this balance point right is really important because if your rudder is um, sucking down too early because your center of gravity is too far forward, so you're having to pull down the rudder too early, then that's going to be giving you writing moment when you don't really want it. You're still trying to kind of power up the boat. You're not using all your kind of available kind of gravity assisted writing moment. The other aspect is the more lift you can do with the rudder, the less lift initially you have to do with the main foil so if you've got really small um, main foils it may be good to have your center of gravity a little bit back so the rudder can do more of that initial work to get it out of the water and especially when the boats aren't foiling that kind of lift from the rudder isn't really harming your writing moment it only harms your writing moment once out of the water so it's probably a good thing to having a significant be able to get a significant amount of lift from the rudder initially to pop out the water but then you want to get rid of it and you probably want to be hitting like the ideal balance point around your kind of like design win so just powered up maximum writing moment from gravity 
and then when you get a gust and a bit more power pushing you forward tilting the boat forward that's when you get a bit more writing moment and the induced drag penalty of that so um, really fascinating kind of part of the physics of these boats and I'm going to do another video on this balancing of the boat on the foils who does what to keep them in check but I just wanted to kind of go over that point and address it in a little bit more depth. I mean, would, would this potentially explain the vibration that we see in the American Magic Helm if they're right on that, if, if they're right at that intersection between the rudder needing to be a lifting surface and a, or a, a downward, a downfall surface, there's going to be fluctuation yeah. between the two and that I, would account I still, for vibration I definitely think that, um, I definitely think the American Magic are behind the curve they were the people who were putting all their weight on the rudder initially all their crew weight far aft and they seem to have got to this point later than other people and they're the only team that has this horrible vibration terry hutchinson said it's oh it's not such a bad thing because it means we're going fast well terry it looks horrendous I don't, <laughs> vibrating when you're going fast is not really the dream either is it yeah they're also the only team with dean barker helming just saying yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, he doesn't look confident about the boat. He scuttles across the back of the boat on all fours and then clings onto a wheel which is rattling him apart. The whole <laughs> thing kind of looks tragic. So just from that point of view, I think they should fix it. And I, I think the other thing that we've clearly seen on the rudders is when, when you watch the boats take off, they take off from the back first. So. Yeah. As they start accelerating, they, gen they generate lift on the rudder before, the, before they put the flaps down on the main foils, which lifts all that wetted surface out, allows them to accelerate more, and then when they reach a critical speed, they push the flaps down, take off. Okay, so some really interesting stuff and some little kind of playing around with centre of gravities, which could give the teams a little bit of a... A writing moment gain as well which is quite an interesting uh, little uh, side note next video we're going to be talking about flap actuation uh, a really interesting really interesting topic probably my favorite so um, yeah catch you catch for that in a few days